Oh, David. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to see you. Amen. On this Sunday morning, God's doing great things. Uh, last week, we studied on uh, how to heal the sick. I've shared many, many uh, keys that I've learned over 47 years of ministry uh, of what you say when you measure healing. Remember, we don't pray for the, the, the sick. Jesus never said to pray for the sick. He said, heal the sick. But what you say makes all the difference in the world. And so we studied that last week, but this week I'm going to teach on how to receive a, your healing and how to maintain your healing. And, uh, and so this is going to be very, very important to go along with this. Remember August 9th at the Vassar House, uh, 7 p.m. in Poughkeepsie, we're having a night of miracles. And we have flowers up here if you don't have one. Uh, and you, we ask you to pre-register because seating is limited. No charge, but uh, it's limited. And so it's 7 o'clock. Be well worth it. And remember, summertime, it don't get dark to real late anyway. And uh, always, my father-in-law used to come visit us. They always had to leave before dark. We got to get home before dark. I said, you got headlights on your truck? <laughs> you know, turn them on. You know? <laughs> Amen. But we got to get home before dark. They turn your headlights on. Amen. So God is good, and we're excited what God is doing. And uh, continue to pray for the, the need for the, the band equipment uh, that I talked to you about. That's all I'm going to say live. <clears throat> I'll get so many emails. I won't be able to read them all. And many hands will come out of the woodwork. And so um, uh, remember Isaiah 53 said that by his stripes we are healed. Yeah. But then First Peter, Peter said by his stripes you were healed. Because that's a death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. In the mind of God on the cross, you were healed. And so Isaiah said, a prophecy about Jesus said, by his stripes you are healed. But First Peter uh, in 2.24 said, by his stripes you were healed. So the mind of God is settled. And so you have to make up your mind that it is his will to heal you. So let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 10. Had most of his message done, and we went and had our fun yesterday at North Lake, and, and I thought, well, I, I'm all ready for Sunday, and then God began to download more. So I got up 5 o'clock this morning, opened my laptop back up, and started adding to the message. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I just, once I woke up, I just got to get up and do it. Yeah. Amen. This is very important to me. Uh, what we mentioned very important. Uh, we don't just try to fill time. I mean, I could give you a CD. You could do that with it. I'll go to my website. I've got 185 uh, supernatural videos on there or on my YouTube. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 7, <clears throat> familiar scripture. Jesus said, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Notice he didn't say pray for the sick. Heal the sick. Amen. Let's stop there just a minute. Uh, especially you that have been under heavier training by me. Make up your mind that we're, we're not going to go with status quo. Uh, I talked to you just the other night in, in many organizations. I used to be part of one. And it's so easy to blend into your what they expect your organization. Well, I preach about this because if you've been in one long, you know what will get people amen and all excited. Well, I'm not there to excite them. You know, I'm not there to preach a homily, a sermon that to make a Christian that. I want a demonstration of the power of the Spirit of God. I want to bring Jesus in. So make up your mind when you're measuring a Bible study individually, witnessing somewhere, and uh, whatever it is, that you bring the power of God in, that he is the, the solution. Mm -hmm. And not just say, well, I'm, this is going to excite people. I know they're going to enjoy this. You know, I'm going to pray a little, little, little prayer that maybe someday they're going to be healed. I'll get a testimony. No, I want to see a difference. I expect to see it now. We'll talk more about seeing it in a minute. I get excited. You guys, excuse me. But as you go preaching, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Free you have received, freely give. One time I get right before I went to the Dominican Republic, I had a, a, a dream about lepers being healed. And when winter, I said, I want to go to a leper colony. And so they brought us to a leper colony. If you've never hugged a leper, You've never hugged anyone yet. Mm -hmm. Because no fear. Hey, I'm going to give them a big hug. Nobody's touch them. I'm going to hug them. I'm going to pray for them. I wish I could say I saw many miracles right there. I didn't. But I will. 
because God show me we will see the lepers cleansed just like he said. Amen. 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 Praise God. And so uh, free you have received, freely give. So God gave me this free. I'm going to freely give it. I'm going to release the power of God. Let's go to Mark 16. Lay down some groundwork before I get into subject matter. Mark 16. Verse 15 through 18. This, this again, Jesus is saying that. I didn't say it, Jesus said it. <laughs> to go to all the world. Now think about it a minute. You're going maybe across the ocean like we, we just came back for our 42nd mission trip. And we traveled all over the U.S. also. But you're going maybe next door to your neighbor. Amen. Joseph going after people at the the, the pork is a witness of the people talking to them. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so go to all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17. So verse 17 says, so after you preach, you will have a little weak service and pray a little weak prayer and everybody go home. Y'all will have a meal and no, that's not what it said. <laughs> you have to excuse me. It's why I'm wound up. <laughs> Verse 17, and these signs. Then talking about the stop sign you run through on the way to church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> these, these, oh, y'all did, huh? <laughs> and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They, shall, they will speak with new tongues. A New Testament believer is expected to speak in tongues. <clears throat> they would take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, they deadly, it would by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That when you go out there and preach the gospel, proclaim what Jesus said and do what Jesus does. He said, the, the works I do, you shall do. And greater works than these shall you do because I go to the Father. He did not say the works I did. He said the works I do. Every time I heal the sick, he's doing it right then. Amen. Uh, I'm the pipe. He's a living water. All the anointing I operate in come from the anointed one. Without him, I could do nothing at all. Amen. I'm totally dependent on him and him only. Amen. Praise God. And so it is his will to heal. Sell that in your mind that it, it is the will of God to heal. I have people sometime walk up to me when I preach a healing message. They walk up and say, uh, Pastor, will you pray for me if it's God's will to heal me, that he'll heal me. The chance of them being healed is slim to none. They have not settled that it's a will of God. This is a will. Amen. This is a legal document. Amen. It will stand in the courts of the universe. Heaven and earth will pass away. But his word will never pass away. Yeah. This is a legal document. Oh, His will. And they come up, pray for me. Pastor, if it's God's will, he'll heal me. The chance of being healed is slim to none. Because they have not settled as His will. If you do not believe it's God's will to heal you, why do you go to the doctor to get better? You try to go against God's will? I will get well. But no, that's, no, it is His will. And thank God for medical science. I'm not against it at all. But, you know, they are practicing medicine. I do know the great physician. Amen. 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 You know, uh, think about that. They give you a bottle of antibiotic and it says take take three times a day uh, for 10 days and you read it and you do it. Then people get this and they read it. Don't worry, I have nicer Bibles. This is my travel Bible. <laughs> but, but they read it and they don't do it. They believe what the pill bottle said. I'm not against the bottle of pills. I'm not preaching against medicine. I never tell people to quit taking their medicine when I heal them. I tell them, go get, check your doctor. Let him tell you to quit taking it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. That his word to heal us. John 10, 10. Oh, yeah. oh, you can quote it. I know. Yeah. Yes. And years ago when Jesus appeared to me face to face, he told me, he said, David, it's never my will that my children die of sickness and disease. Amen. And when he said that, John 10, 10 hit my spirit. 
That's why I pastored for 33 years in a local church and no one ever died of cancer. They all got healed. Hallelujah. I don't know how many got cancer, but they all got healed. They're still out there running around somewhere. Amen. People ask you, how many people run? I said, about 2,000. I only caught a few. <laughs> the first time I preached here, I talked about that. Pastor Joshua came to my office. I told him, I'm going to go somewhere they don't know me because many people were here came to my conference and got healed and set free. And I said, I'll go where no one, no one knows me. I want to send my people here. He said, no, you come here today. We want to have you here. I said, well, some of them want healing. He said, healing. I said, okay, here I come. And uh, so the first time I preached here, I said, uh, when, I, uh, when God showed me to quit local pastor and transfer, I said, I had all my people transfer over here, both of them. <laughs> and lame, I fell off the seat, and Josh been laughing so hard. <laughs> there was a few more than that, not many. Some of them still here, by the way. And so John 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, destroy. I have come that they may have life, they may have it more abundantly. This is Jesus speaking. He's talking about the devil, the thief. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If it's stealing, kill, and destroy, it's not a good Jesus, it's of the devil. Amen. Jesus is not going to make you sick, the devil is. And we'll talk about some of the protocol in a minute. I guess you could call it. Don't worry. We're getting there. So, um, <coughs> where you said all that? I get ahead of myself. Don't worry. Matthew 8, 1, 3. I, I love this scripture. I had to dig and dig to find it again. The older you get, the more the concordance is your friend. Yes. <laughs> Matthew 8, verse 1 through 2. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if, it, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I love it. I am willing to be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm willing. He said, Lord, if you're willing, you, you can cleanse me. You can heal me. She said, I'm willing. Mm -hmm. You never find Jesus saying, it's not my will to do this. No. <clears throat> the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Could Jesus come to give you life and life more abundantly? Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. So let's go to, um, we're talking about some blockages now. Uh, we're talking about how to receive your healing. We're talking about some blockages that sometimes block people from receiving their healing. There's several. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's more than I listed today. Third John, uh, verse three. You hear this one all the time from me. Mm -hmm. You have more than one chapter in the wrong John. Third John, verse three. Chapter one, verse three. Religious folks out here. <clears throat> verse two. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. He wants you to prosper. That's financial blessing and be in health just as your soul prospers. And remember, God, God blesses us and gives us even wealth, but has no sorrow to it. Amen. The world out there, many of them are making covenants with, with Satan to be famous and rich, but they have sorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know, some of them have so many wives, they probably can't count them. And, and it may have, look like they have everything, but they have nothing. Amen. Without Jesus, we have nothing. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. And so he wants us to prosper in all things and be in health. Our, that's our body healing. Just as your soul prospers. Let me explain it again. If your soul is full of fear, worry, we're going to talk about unconfessed sin in a minute. It's in turmoil to affect your finances, it's going to affect your health. Again, as I say all, over and over, you find when you tell me about when your friends is always worried, you're talking about your friend is always sick. Mm -hmm. Amen. Full of fear. Fear has torment. I had uh, two major messages on YouTube uh, in this class and one from upstairs that the whole altar area and halfway down the aisles filled up with people coming forward to be set free from Hallelujah. fear. People yeah. in this class right here that had fear of bugs, uh, fear of this, fear of that, fear of cats. <laughs> I don't like cats. I don't fear them, you know. Yeah. Amen. But uh, every time a cat comes to my yard, I speak to it. Get out of here! <laughs> you know, but, but anyway, uh, set free. Fear has torment. 
He didn't give us a spirit of fear. It has to do with spirit. I tell you, conquer every fear. I don't care if it's a little bitty one. Mm -hmm. But this little thing it can't bother us. Yeah. It's going to block you from flowing in the powerful things of the spirit. It's going to block you from receiving healing mm -hmm. and deliverance. Get rid of it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We met a lady one time that's connected to uh, someone had met her and sent us over to measure her house, my wife and I. And uh, the, the lady, I actually went to measure her mother, but the lady had not been out of the house in years. She's afraid to go outside. Mm -hmm. That's a spirit of fear. Yeah. That's not a little fear. It's just like, I tell you, you know, if you walk down the trail, see a rouse thing, you know, jump back, ah, like that. that that's normal. That's natural reaction. But you say, I'll never go outside again. There may be a rouse thing. You're in a Walmart park lot. There may be a rattlesnake. Can't get out of my car. Oh, come on. There's a spirit yeah. of fear. That little thing took over. Yeah. We should be led by the Holy Spirit, Amen. not spirits of fear. Yeah. I couldn't tell you how many demons I've cast out of people for years. I can sit and tell wild stories for the whole rest of the class. I won't. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and so, I want you to prosper in all things, a few things. No, all things. And be in hell just as your soul prospers. So if your soul has fear, unforgiveness, anger, so on, it's a blockage. In unforgiveness, you've got to forgive others. Amen. You've got to forgive yourself. Amen. Well, my people tell me, don't forget that, Pastor. Forgive yourself. You know, I'd be a total emotional cripple today. Had not forgiven others, had forgiven myself. I mean, you know, you know, I'll, I'll come out of war. You know, I mean, you know, I've seen things, had to do things. I know it's hard to even talk about sometimes for most people. I can do it come healed. But the thing is, I'd be a, a, an emotional cripple. Oh, but I, I was at war. I was bound by post traumatic stress disorder. That's fear. I didn't know until God revealed to me in worship that day. That's fear. He showed me. I said, God, forgive me. Take this away. You know, I confessed it. Mm -hmm. It's hard for a, a warrior to admit he has fear. This is macho guy. Oh, look at us. Oh, look at me. Yeah, look at you. You're wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to look at you. I look right now. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Let's go to 1 John chapter 1. This one has more chapters. Chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. Let's chew on this a little bit. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. If we confess our sins, if we hold our sins in and hide them, no, no. If we confess our sins, he is faithful just forgive us, forgive us our sins and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And where those sins are unrighteousness. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. His word is not in us. So if we confess our sins, the thing is, we have to learn that God knows all about it. You're not going to shock God. Oh, I had no idea you were doing that. Oh, Oh, I would never, no, you're not going to shock God. He knows it. But he will not deal with it in your life <laughs> until you confess it to him. Amen. You got to tell him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Does that soak in a little bit? Yeah. He knows it already. Yeah. But if you want to admit it to God, I'll talk about some other admit in a minute. If you want to admit it to God, he's not going to deal with it. I wish God would take this away. Have you confessed it to him? I read in my Bible that we should cast all our cares upon him. Hallelujah. See, some people have like two big old garbage bags, just picturesquely speaking, uh, of, of problems in their life. And they get ready to approach. The Bible said we can boldly, we come boldly to the throne of grace and make our petition. We boldly, hey, the, 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 the veil was torn when Jesus died. We can boldly go to the throne of grace. Every hair on my arm and head standing up. Every <clears throat> stand up real high. I better say that. Author, you got to help me in my boat. Tell me how to use certain terminology. Anyway, it did look like a fro coming up. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, but, but, but the, the thing is, 
uh, that, that, that we covered those two big old cars, bags and stuff, and we get to the throne room of Grace Picture Wrestling, and we say, well, I, I, he's not going to understand all this. I'm going to leave one bag outside. I will come in here and say, <clears throat> here, God, I cast all my cares upon you. And God look around at what's that? What's out there? And then we give him that. We walk out, we pick it up, and we walk through life. But we didn't cast all our care on him. Yeah. We're still spiritually crippled. Think about Naaman that came to the prophet. A mighty man of war from Syria. A mighty man. But he's a leper. A lot of Christians are still spiritual lepers. Oh, they look good on Sunday. But what about Monday? I always remember, I tell you over and over, reputation is what people think you are. Character is what you really are. Amen. Who you are when no one can see you. That's what you really are. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know God sees it all. Amen. Amen. Yes. Don't look so serious. <laughs> Amen. And so we cast all our cares on him. And so when we confess our sins, Let's go ahead. We've talked already about godly sorrow before. It needs to be godly sorrow. You know, many people in prison that are so sorry they got caught. But the last I checked the records, around 82 or 83 percent would be back in jail in a short time. If they're sorry they got caught, and they're not sorry they did it. You, you take a pig, bring it in your, your house, put it, give it a bubble bath and a, a bad tub, perfume, little bows on his ears, uh, uh, and everything. But you turn it loose, you go right back to the, the mud hole, the water. Jesus talked about it in the Old Testament and you, like a pig going back to the water. Why? Because it's still a pig in the heart. Okay. Still a pig in the heart. If we get the pig out of our heart, we don't go back to that mud hole. Right. Amen? Amen. Say Ben. Amen. Praise God. No way, I'm not going to joke. Amen. So God is ours. So James 5. Yeah, something we don't talk about too often around here. I don't think I have too much. Maybe. <laughs> James 5, verse 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So it's telling you to confess your trespasses to one another. And Remember, we just read a while ago about in first job about confessing our sin. In most cases, you can bring your situation to, to Jesus. Say, Jesus, here it is. Forgive me. And God is sorrow. Forgive me. And he'll take care of it. But there's sometimes you'll find yourself, you went through all those motions, but you're still bound. Mm -hmm. And I believe myself personally, Cardinal 3 and 8, my opinion is a lot of times it's because of a pride situation. And the Lord more interested in setting you free from that pride and a lot of the other things. And, and you will find in that case, you'll have to go to another human being. And don't go to just anyone, okay? A lot of people are not equipped to handle your stuff. But go to someone that you can trust and usually someone in authority is a good shot. And, and you have to go there and say, I've just got to talk about it. I, I've been doing this. I, I need you to pray for me. Here's my sin. Here's what I've been doing. You know, we're not talking about a little boot. We're talking about another human being, okay? And when you do that, there's usually a pride that breaks. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are carrying hidden sins. Mm -hmm. you know, nobody sees them. You know, get up Sunday morning, smile in the mirror, spray paint can religion all over. Go to church, praise God, hallelujah, God's so good. But on Monday, another storm Tuesday, bad. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. So let, let's be real. Be as real at Walmart. Wally War was I call it as you are right now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, let's, let's face it. Is, is there don't don't raise your hand, please? But uh is there anyone here that would like the Lord to show a big screen in front of everybody right now to show all your sins? <laughs> Watch out. Come on. But if you confess your sins, he's faithful just forgive you of all sin. Not a few, oh, yeah. all. Yes. But that doesn't work. It gets you free. But whatever you're dealing with, you need to go to another human being and let that pride break. And just tell them. 
be honest. Amen. There's some of the spirit room go snap. Amen. Praise God. It really works. Okay. <clears throat> I know what you already said. Oh. And so let's go to Mark 11, verse 24. <clears throat> Mark 11, verse 24. Jesus speaking again. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And so when you pray, believe you receive it. I tell you that, I mean, I've seen so many cancers healed, tumors the size of my hand disappear in my hand over and over. Uh, goiters healed, other tumors healed. Blind eyes pop open, deaf ears pop open. Amen. <clears throat> but every time I clamp hands on them or speak the word, whichever way I'm doing it, in my eyes of faith, I'm seeing that tumor disappear. Amen. Amen. So he said that, what, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them. Begin to see them. Is receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See yourself speaking in tongues. See yourself being healed. <clears throat> See yourself being as well on Sunday as you are on Monday. Uh -oh. Amen. I, was, I just can't make it. We talked about spirit of infirmity the other day, remember? Mm -hmm. I was raised with that. That's why I was never grounded in, in the things of God growing up. I was raised in that. Come church out. Oh, I, I feel sick, David. Oh, I, feel, I don't think we can make it. On Sunday, as a little child, I'm trying to get sick. You make your whole family sick. You probably make your dog and cat sick. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I made my. I got rabbits. I got bigger rabbits. I got a little bit of baby rabbit. I show my wife, and she come out. And it's gone. I was sitting there watching that rabbit over for half an hour, and then it won't come back out for her. <laughs> Scared of her. <laughs> I had to open the little door again. It made a lot of noise. I think that was it. But when you ask, believe her. See, see yourself. See yourself in victory. See yourself driving by the liquor store not pulling in. See yourself driving by the bar not pulling in. Amen. 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 See yourself driving by the porn shop and not pulling in. Mm -hmm. See yourself being solicited by someone very interested. And you turn them down and keep walking. The Bible said to resist the devil. Yeah. He'll flee from you. But before it says that, it says, stand steadfast in the faith. You can't do it on your own. Yeah, you stand can. steadfast in the faith. Amen. Hey, I stand on the rock of ages. Hallelujah. Yeah. I stand steadfast in the faith. I resist the devil. He'll flee from me. Amen. Amen. I heard the old joke years ago. One woman said, I'm not going to resist the devil. I'm afraid I'll get the fleas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'll get them all morning. It's okay. Right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Somebody actually said that, by the way. So your eyes of faith see it being healed. I would teach you people how to see in the spirit. See yourself seeing the spirit before you see in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I look at human body many times. I many times I pray for people. I, sometimes God just supernaturally brings me in, and I see. But other times he doesn't bring me in. I just lean into that gift. God, no, I have that gift. If he allows me to, I just go right in there. But I begin to see. Amen. I just lean in expecting to see. See, expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. Amen. Expect a miracle. Some people expect to be sick. Amen. They're, they're, they're. I tell you, years ago, I was, I was getting a a haircut in the mall, and a lot of people had their hair wet, you know, men and women in chairs there. Air conditioner would come on. Somebody said, oh, everybody's going to get sick. Not me. Yeah. Not me. We hear sometimes a report, everybody's catching this. We're not. My wife and I both confess. We're not getting it. No. Amen. Amen. We're not getting it. Amen. But what, what does some people commit? Oh, I'm going to get sick. Oh, fear. And once you begin to fear, you open yourself a demonic attack. Yeah. You're not resisting the devil. You're walking with him. Mm -hmm. and, and so you have to make up your mind. By his stripes, I'm healed. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, so um, let's read. 
you can quote, I'm sure, Proverbs 18, 21. I'll just read it to you real quick. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So you can speak blessing or you can speak cursing. Amen. I have a whole message on YouTube if you're not uh, um, too afraid to watch it, uh, blessing and cursing. And um, anybody in Team Supernatural, you're not watching, you need to watch it. And most of them heard it more than once. Yeah. And Tammy made me put the one I did on in Team Supernatural. I normally don't put uh, videos on that, but she, she about twisted my arm. Yeah. Not totally, but uh, she knew people needed to hear it. Yeah. Most Christians don't realize how much cursing they're doing without saying what they think is curse words. Mm -hmm. They're still cursing. Yeah. Watch the video, you're going to find out what I mean. So don't curse your healing. That's right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of people, uh, when they get healed, suddenly, um, we got a fresh handkerchief for this. <laughs> she looks, you know, but say, say their shoulder's hurting, and they get healed, and that pain leaves their shoulder. Mm -hmm. they, Praise God, hallelujah, I'm healed. And a few days later, a symptom come back. Mm -hmm. And some people say, oh, I must not have been healed. Guess what? They just cursed their healing. And they're not going to be healed. They just said, Mr. Devil, jump back on. But what you do, you resist it. You say, no, I was healed by his stripes. Jesus healed me. I will not accept those symptoms. And he may try two or three times, and after that, it's gone. It's not coming back. Hallelujah. But if you say, oh, oh, no. Oh, it, it's coming. I've heard so many people, oh, it came back. You're not going to lose your healing. You can give it away. God's not going to, well, I'm taking it away from him. That's it. No, no, he's not going to take it away from you. The devil will if he can deceive you and he gives it back to him. Give him permission to, to reflect you. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Increase. <laughs> What's that? What's she listening? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. God is so good. He is. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, let's go to something else. Matthew 18. Verse 16. This time, a lot of time I forget to share at the end of my healing messages. If you're around me, remind me, please. It is so important. Matthew 18, verse 16. I'm just cutting in one, one part of the conversation here. Verse 16. But he would not hear. Take with you one or two more. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And then repeat it in the Old Testament and the New Testament several times. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. When God heals you, immediately find two or three witnesses and tell them whether it's someone standing around you uh, in a meeting or you have to get on text. Some of y'all have phones that text, right? <laughs> Amen. I mean, I try to get my, when I got a new phone, I try to get my wife one of the flip phones with big numbers. But, amen. I told you about my dad when he was with us. One time he was in Kingston Hospital, he had a flip phone like that. And the nurse station called me, this true story. And it said, uh, 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 Mr. Uh, David, we, we, we had to lock your dad's phone up in the safe. I said, what happened? He said he called police three times and he was held against his will. Please come charge it up at the hospital <laughs> like he was uh, kidnapped. So they had to lock it in. He didn't want to be in the hospital. The true story. My dad had a very strong will. Great man. Came to God 15 years before uh, he passed on. Served God faithfully. Praise God. And I'm thankful. My dad was a kind, gentle man, uh, even before he was saved. So I had no problem. See, my heavenly father is a kind, gentle heavenly father. If you've been raised by a dad that wasn't like that, you need a little deliverance. Yeah. So you see your heavenly father. It's a kind, gentle yes. father. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I, I remember when I come back from Vietnam, he realized, I, he wouldn't really say anything, but he realized I, I was kind of hurting puppy, you know. And I heard a news man say the other day, you know, when someone's been in war, when they come back, they're going to be a little different. <laughs> a little different. Yeah. You think? Yeah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so my dad was trying to help me out. <clears throat> he said, I met a man that was in World War II. He told me he had to sneak up behind the enemy one time and cut his throat, but but he was okay. He was okay. What he really said, David, you're okay. I wasn't okay. No. I was far from okay. Yeah. He didn't understand. He was just trying to help me out, but you know, <laughs> he just I wasn't okay. <laughs> but like the nutcase years ago wrote the book, You're okay. I'm okay, you're okay. Neither one was okay. Yeah. Come on, don't read that stuff. 
that y'all don't go by. I'm not recommending it, okay? <laughs> Amen. And so that law of the spirit, get, get a witness. I'm going to explain why it's very, very important as we begin to close. Amen. <laughs> and so it's a law of the spirit. When you're healed, the enemy sometimes try to put that symptom back on you. You're not confessed, you're not healed, but say by his stripes, I'm healed. Mm -hmm. And so you need those witnesses. It's like a courtroom. Amen. The devil, take a picture of a courtroom for just a little simple courtroom. The devil is the accuser of the brother. Jesus Christ is the only mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. The Father, picture him on the on the, the judge's bench. And the devil comes up and says, He's not healed. And the judge is going to say, are there any witnesses? And you're going to turn around and say, yes, I have three witnesses right here that saw me being healed. Mm -hmm. And you're ruling your favor. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual law. Hallelujah. You do this in the spirit. Right? You're like in the natural, in the spirit. Right? Amen. You have witnesses. Some people are, do not want to tell someone, oh, my shoulder just got healed. I'm not going to tell Joseph here. Because uh, if it's not really healed, you will you will think something wrong with me. It's because you don't believe you're healed. You, you already lost it. Amen. Amen. Some people are afraid. Of, I'm not going to tell anybody just in case it didn't really happen. What? You know, like right right there in Avondale, Eastern Prison is closed now. The airport, 100% blind men receive their sight right in the meeting. My friend Hugh, they come to church once in a while. Vietnam veteran shot. <clears throat> I wounded three times in Vietnam, shot down once in a helicopter. Amen. Uh, he heard the enemy. He didn't have a weapon on me, thrown out of it. He heard the enemy coming through the bush after him. Suddenly a chopper sat down, picked him up. He, he lived. Amen. There's a song about protected by prayer. They talk about some of those words in that, that song. I love it. Amen. <clears throat> but but the, th the thing is uh, that, that you're healed. And, and you need to go ahead and get those witnesses and, and let them stand. I get back to where, where I was in a moment, but let them stand there with you. I'm healed. If you're in the church service here, lady, last Sunday, your arm was healed. Somebody says, I have pain all the way through my arm. I forgot which arm it was. I said, no problem. I just took her, was her left arm. I took her arm. I commanded her to be healed. And I said, where the pain go to? I said, I told Pastor Josh, she said on the front there, I said, she's here. He's all excited. She's all excited. Mm -hmm. Some of you know her. You told me her name yesterday. I, most of you, I don't even know who they are. <laughs> so we do faces sometimes. And amen. But the thing is, heal them mm -hmm. by the power of God. Mm -hmm. And I, I told you last week how to heal the sick. Yeah. And I'm not going back through it, but if you were, didn't hear it, you should hear it. And some of you need to hear more than one time. Mm -hmm. Uh, really, yeah. amen. Uh, either the ones I do in the bed in the Holy Spirit, uh, one of my friends right here uh, had been around the church for years here and had not received it. He never really heard it preach. I gave him a CD and he, he, he listened to the CD back and forth to work four times. He came to my home and sat right on the sofa to see the bed in the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah, listened to it four times before he believed it. Mm -hmm. Good man, love God, but could not operate in power. Mm. Amen. 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 Some of these things you need to go back and listen a lot. Amen. Let's stand. Let's go to a fervent prayer. We got plenty of time. Let's not pray a little. Let's pray a quickie prayer. Get to the bagel. Forget the bagel. It'll be there. <laughs> now we'll buy you one. I have Joseph buy you a bagel right after church. <laughs> Take you down there to wherever you buy them. Amen. I eat about one, one or two bagels a year. I like them, but you know, I don't like to have to wear them. <laughs> Seems like I'll come right here in my bagel. Amen. Amen. Let's go to fervent prayer. And remember the, the woman with the issue of blood said, touching Jesus. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And this Prayer time, get serious. And we're gonna pray a little religious prayer real quick. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pick the chairs up and go. No, it's such Jesus. Like we say around Christmas time, he's a reason for the season. He's a reason we're here. Mm -hmm. I was standing outside my garage this morning, waiting for my wife to catch up. 
just praying and thinking about the Lord, is that we just need to be so conscious of him. Mm. So conscious of him. Lord Jesus, let's all pray together. Lord Jesus, we love you. Lord. We praise you. God, let's be conscious of you right now in this meeting. God, I thank you, Lord, for your word, your loving kindness, your tender mercies, Lord. I bless the Lord, oh my soul, with all that is with it. I bless your holy name. And I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I lift up holy hands unto you right now. I magnify you, Lord, King of kings, Lord of lords, mighty God, everlasting Father. You're the Prince of Peace. The great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are my God in whom I trust, Lord. God, let us trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding, Lord. Oh Lord, those without the Holy Spirit receive the message of the Holy Spirit. Speak in tongues. See yourself talking in tongues. Those that need healing, see yourself being healed right now. Those that need deliverance from hidden sin, see yourself being set free right now as you confess your sin to God. God, I release the faith of God right now. I release the faith of God in this room. The word of God, the name of Jesus. I release in this room right now. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall never pass away, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Oh, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Messiah. It is you, Lord. God, we give you glory. We worship you. We praise you for your mighty acts. We worship you because you are worthy, Lord. Worthy is a lamb. Worthy is a lamb of God. Lord Jesus, we ask that you walk among us, Lord. Lord, I ask that you walk among us in your body presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome here. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, the very voice of God on earth right now. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome right now. You're so welcome in this house right now. Speak to us. Speak to us, Lord. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Oh, God, let us hear your voice. Let us know your voice. You said your sheep know your voice. And another they will not follow, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And God, those that are having trouble focusing right now, let them focus on you. God, there's some working on Monday right now. They're talking about in your mind about after church. Focus on him right now. In, I'm sorry I had to read a few thoughts. But focus on him right now. In the name of Jesus. Focus on him. Be present right now. Be present in his presence. Be manifest in the flesh stood before you right now. You'll be worried about Monday. Be focused on him. He's here just the same. He's just the same. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. You're the King of Kings. You're the Lord of Lords. There is none like it to my God. You're the healer. Right now, I command every sickness. I command every disease, every spirit of fury, every foul spirit of death. I command to leave now every spirit of cancer. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, I release it. I release it right now. In Jesus' name. It's fire from this pulpit to the back right now. It's fire right through right now. 
There's fire right through right now. Healing. A wave of healing just went through this house. Went through this class right now. Wave of healing. Wave after wave after wave of healing. Let him do it right now. Thank you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Lord, let those with hidden sins confess them to you. That, that does not work for them. Let them find someone they can trust to do so. God, let them be free. Whom the Son shall make free is free indeed. You're, they're free indeed, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Not that whom the Son set free, the whom the Son makes free. Makes free. Just like you, you clean out a glass, you will make it clean. You'll wash out all the residue out of it, make it clean. That whom the Son shall make free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Hallelujah. Always remember free men. Free men. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> hurt men. Hurt men. Mm -hmm. About mankind. Male and female. Jesus. Mm. Be real. Worship Stay in his presence. We're not, it's not over. Good, good. The Spirit of God is moving a special way here right now. Did you discern what he's doing right now? Feel the presence of God. The Bible said that they that draw near to God, He would draw near to them. You that drew near to God in this meeting, he, he, you feel His presence right now. You just focusing on next week. You're wondering how long this is going to last. Sorry, I had to drop in again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us focus on you. Yes. Let us be present. You're here. Put on Facebook, I think, last week. Don't talk about God like he's not here. Yes. Don't talk about God like he's not here. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. God, I release peace upon your people today. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding touch them right now. Let great peace come upon them. Let every nerve of their body relax. Those bound by fear, and not just speaking to this people in a class, but I'm speaking to people on Facebook Live and people on YouTube and be listening to it uh, over who knows how long. When I'm gone, it should still be on there going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I release peace to them. Yeah. Give them peace. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Give them peace. Let them relax in the spirit. In Jesus' name. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Go ahead today. Go ahead and touch the heavens of right now. Touch him. Whatever your need is, just, well, just reach up right now. Lift your hands right now. And, and take your hands and, and picture yourself touching the hem of his garment. That whatever you have need of right now, you receive it instantly. You receive it instantly. He said, I felt power leave me. That word is luminous. We get our word dynamite. He felt power leaving him. Touch him right now. And you'll feel that power of God coming through you. Whatever you need is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we pray right now for the night of miracles on August the 9th at Pastor. Seven o'clock. We pray for that. God, that you'll draw people. You send our people out for outreach. You go out to that area and do it. Now just expect somebody to show up. I did a study one time when I pastored. And, and, and all the percents of people that come to why they come to God. And we used to have a marquee with signs out there uh, every week. Most of the time I was out there changing them. And it said 0.02% at that time come to God because they drove by the sign and saw it turned in. 0 0.02. But 85 to 90% came because a friend, a relative, acquaintance on the job or whatever invited them. You need to go tell somebody. We got flowers here. I'm sure we can get more we need. I got some out here. Amen. Please go out there. Uh, uh, I told uh, 
texted back for Andre yesterday. And, and she said that that whole area around there had people walking all over the place. Mm-hmm. You just walk out there. You, you don't have, I'm not talking about knocking on doors. Just walk out there and find somebody. Amen. 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 Jesus did a lot of that, remember? Mm-hmm. Over along the shore of Galilee. Look, people. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. The way they're doing a miracle with them. Amen. Mm-hmm. You don't have to wait for that night. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. You need something special. We'll pray for you. We'll pray for you after the service. Thank you.